تفداك عيني ومالي امي وابويا وعيالي ويشي ثمين وغالي يا رسول الله طيفك داعب خيالي مزيون <تصفيق> أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The aspect of crying, most of the people, they, they say that uh, crying is a, an effeminate character. In, uh, most of the time, the people who cry are feminine, uh, well, they are women and not men. I mean, men, you need to be strong in most of the cases. Uh, this is the way people they are understanding the aspect of crying. And the question we should ask ourselves is that crying is something good or bad? This is a question that we need to ask ourselves. Among men, the question <coughs> is often asked if manly, I mean, if it is manly or a manly character to cry. Suppose a man is crying, is this a manly character or what? And when a man cries, is he being affeminated? Is he being taken into the characteristic of the women? Without a doubt, crying is not always a good thing. Not every day that to cry, a person to cry is a good thing. And uh, there are some situations whereby the people who are expected to cry are the women and not men. Men should be stronger in some of the situation. Sometimes crying it is considered to be a foolish manner to a person if you cry without a reason. But we know that in different situations, crying actually it is counted to be a virtue character or to be a character which is encouraged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this means that to cry for a person, if you cry for the purpose of crying, that you are crying for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you are encouraged to do that. It is a virtue to cry when one regrets having disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People normally they cry for the worldly things. For example, somebody is abandoned by his girlfriend or abandoned or had missed something in the world, then you start crying, you know. And it's like this is an obvious thing. Always this is something happening to the people. Most mostly when you look in the life of the student, then this is happening most of the time. And people are there, you know, to calm the brother down. Don't cry, this is a part of life. It, is a, it isn't exactly the, the, the issue of crying. But we don't understand exactly how life it is and that's why we are crying for the things which we are not supposed to cry for. Sometimes a person is losing. Maybe he's uh, supporting a certain team and his team lose. And he starts cry, uh, crying, you know, feeling, uh, feeling bitter in his side, his heart inside his heart and he starts crying. This is the reason that people they are crying for. Sometimes a person is failing for the exam, he is crying because he failed the exam. But we will see inshallah Prophet why he is crying. And uh, the scholars they say if you cried because of the sins that you have done, you have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a type of cry that you need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have it. 
It is a praiseworthy quality to cry when one remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when one fears the evil consequences of one's sins. In fact, crying in such situations, it is commandable. Something commanded and you need to cry in those situations. And it is a proof of one's sincerity and piety. But if you cry because you are fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are fearing for your disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sins that you have committed, then surely that is something commandable from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, He said, He praised His Messenger for crying. And He said in the Quran, uh, in chapter 19, which is Surah Al Maryam, verse number 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَانِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَرُكِيًّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when the verses of the most gracious Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were recited unto them, they fell down prostrating and weeping. This is a character of the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, and Allah also he described his obedient slaves, the believers also. In another place he said, in chapter 17 verse number 109 he said, وَيَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ وَيَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ يَبْقُونَ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ خُشُوعًا He said, and they fell down on their faces weeping and it adds to their humility. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned His enemies for being cold and feeling and hard-hearted. He said, أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَقُونَ وَلَا تَبْقُونَ he said, do you then wonder at this recital of the Qur'an and you laugh at it and weep not? And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in the Qur'an, it is not appearing to the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, but now we found it that it also happened to the Muslims themselves. Sometimes the Qur'an is recited and uh, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe they are talking about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how harsh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he to the disobedient people. We found out that people instead of feeling bitter for what they have done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the disobedience they have committed, they start laughing. Sometimes a person is just laughing. Sometimes a person doesn't care. In those verses, they are recited and they are mainly revealed for everybody. You know, when we normally recite the Qur'an and we hear about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of the time we say it is not we which we are aimed from these verses. But it is those kufars, those mushrikun. These verses are only for them, not for us. But let me tell you something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He revealed His verses of punishments, we need to observe very carefully. Because to be called a Muslim, it doesn't mean that you don't commit shirk. You can be called a Muslim, but still you can commit shirk. To be called a Muslim, it doesn't mean that you cannot commit any act of kufr. You can commit an act of kufr. Even though we cannot call you a Muslim, or we cannot call you a kafir, but still the actions of shirk, maybe you're committing them. Or maybe you're committing the actions of kufr. And you don't know. And do you think that because of your tag, to be tagged, that you are a Muslim, you are not going to be punished? Scholars they are saying that to be called a Muslim or to be born from the Muslim family. It is not a reason for you to go to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a reason at all. This is something that we need to understand. Because we feel that we are Muslims and then we are already there. Nothing bad will happen to us. We are just deceiving ourselves day and night. And Shaitan is playing with us day and night. Telling us you are Muslims, you will go to Jannah. Don't worry. There is no punishment on you. Do whatever you want to do. 
he used the advantage of us to be called as Muslims. So for you to be called a Muslim, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what matters are the characters of a person. If a person is a Muslim and he is a good Muslim, by characteristics, then this person surely, he will be a beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if this person is a Muslim and he is doing whatever he is doing in this world, and he knows that whatever he is doing is not correct, then he surely is going to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. There is no doubt in that. Just remove your doubts. There is no doubt in that. Punishment for a person who is disobedient, it is there. We should not have other ways of interpreting the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The punishment is there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talk about the punishment of the people who doesn't remember His remembrance. Look in Surah Al-Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He said, from the verse 124, when He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً وَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَمَا قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَ أَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَا وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَشْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is talking about the punishment to the Muslims not to the non-Muslims the scholars they say Dhikri which has been mentioned in this verse, it is Salah. Because a Salah is a type of Dhikri to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't pray. So you have to remember Him in order for you to pray. So Dhikri in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned as a Salah. So for those who doesn't remember their Salah, who forget about the obedience of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what will happen to them. They will get a difficult life in this world. Whatever you get it, you find it, it is not enough for you. Your heart is not settled in your life. It is no comfort. It doesn't be covered with the tranquility. You just find yourself, you are not comfortable, you are not stable. You are suffering day and night. Why? Because you forgot to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What exactly settle the heart of a person? Or put the tranquility, the sakina, into the heart of a believer? Nothing than remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing than remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because our hearts have been created to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by default. They have been created to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by nature. But ourselves, we are using our minds in order to control our heart and take them to where our heart they are not created for. For example, a person, he is desiring something which is against the nature of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has told us to do in this particular world. Then you find out that your mind will find different kind or construct different kind of strategies for you to do or to commit that particular act. And do you feel that if I'm going to do it, I will say to my pressure, or oh, I will get the tranquility inside my heart. Or oh, my heart will be settled, the pressure will be removed.